watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Download Beely now. For decades, women have fought tooth and manicured nail for equality and independence. But where has it left our men? That's well a hard question. More than ever, 21st century men are struggling to find their identity. I don't know who wears the trousers anymore. So many of them lack confidence and they still live at home. And when it comes to women, they are clueless. I don't think I'll ever figure out what women want. I'm taking 10 hapless, hopeless blokes and I'm going to transform them into eligible, dateable, capable men. And by the end of it, find the hero inside all of them. Over one week, each guy is going to have to leave behind their sad lives. I have no clue what's going to happen. And face their greatest fears. I feel absolutely destroyed already. I've got no freaking clue. Confront their inner demons. I'd like to be more trusting! And learn a few things about the opposite sex. It's the most physical contact I've had with a woman in a long time. Help is at hand. This is shocking. Just let out the rage. Release that emotion. It's not going to be easy. Right. I've got to get through this. I'll agree to disagree, then. No, no. It's time to man up. This is Mark Britton, a 33-year-old self-confessed computer nerd who still lives at home with his mother and brother. In Yeovil, a small town 130 miles from the chaos of London with a modest population of only 40,000. Mark's morning routine is, well, pretty average. He brushes his teeth and then gets dressed for work in a uniform consisting of black trousers, regulation shirt, size nine black shoes, and a name badge. He then gels his hair in a style that he hasn't changed in 20 years. Mark then eats his breakfast, bran flakes, and then gets a lift to work from his favorite taxi service, Mum, who delivers him to the local retail park. Have Thanks. a good day, see Thanks. you later. Where he sells an array of white goods and computers. Mark's stuck in a rut and can't get out. I'm currently working in retail. I know I'm doing pretty well uh, in that job, but I, it isn't fulfilling everything I want to be doing. I could be looking more for more jobs out there. There is a part of me that's like, I want to be doing more. For Mark, this most definitely oh, well, isn't living the dream. I mean, if we're talking total pie-in-the-sky dream, I would love to write, I would love to work in the games industry. All that sort of thing would massively interest me. Sadly, the closest Mark gets to that dream is playing computer games in his mum's attic, where he is a leader, confident and, above all, successful. For in cyberspace, he is fleet commander Mark Britton, leading armies of thousands into online battles. I'm helping arrange and order battles between, you know, thousands of participants. He goes up in his room, he puts his headphones on and shuts himself off and plays his PC and we don't really see a great deal of him. Mark is literally living in a fantasy, an online world that's robbing him of his real life. It is true that I have spent 23 hours straight on a gaming session. A virtual world that has left him alone and completely in the dark. And when daylight comes, it doesn't get any better. As you can see, I don't really have an awful lot of variation in my day-to-day -day clothing. Hoodies, T-shirts, that's about it. Where do I start my most dress sense? Another day, another hoodie. Another day, another hoodie. I don't worry about fashion. It's no wonder Fleet Commander Britain is single, but even if he did have time for the opposite sex, he has no idea what to do. He makes friends of all the girls he meets, but he doesn't seem to chat them up. He is very articulate, but he comes across as a friend, and he gets overlooked as a possible partner. Mark's luck in Yeovil has been bad to say the least, so much so he's even concerned for his own future. I'm worried that 40 years' time I'll be looking back and going, what have I done?
With that in mind, it's time to yank Mark out of Yeovil and into the action. Over the next week, I'm going to arm Mark with a set of man skills that will allow him to move forward with his life and unleash the man within. Left Yeovil, which is always yay. Hoping it'll be good, a bit of an adventure, but a bit apprehensive. So Mark's waving goodbye to the West Country and saying hello to the bright lights and the big city of London. Mark will be staying at the Man Up flat to embark on a five-step programme of reinvention, facing challenges designed to change him, both inside and out. Wow, what a place. There's nothing like this in Yeovil. I mean, it's really interesting. I've never been anywhere like it. Oh well, no computer. Can't have everything. As Mark stirs from a blissful night's sleep, I'm on my way to meet him. I sense he's got the potential, but making him realise this is going to be the challenge ahead. You see this a lot with men like Mark. They hide behind the safety of their computer and they get lost in this virtual fantasy world. And it's not real. They're not participating in the real world. And if Mark wants to realise his dreams and ambitions, he's going to have to switch that computer off and get into the real world. What do you want for your future? I want to have someone who wants to be with me as much as I want to be with them meets me halfway, um, and just happy. When was the last time you were happy? Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> I could... Uh... That's so sad to hear that. Yeah. How come you haven't had any fun with ladies recently? I get f friend zone quite quickly. Are you putting yourself in friend zone because you're not making a move? It could, it could well be that. You've been spending far too much time in the virtual world. We need to get you into the real world. And we're going to tackle all of your issues head on. We're going to look at your confidence. We're going to be looking at how you think on the inside, how you're feeling on the inside, and deal with how you feel on the outside as well. There is no stone going to be left unturned by the end of this. Have a shower, slip into something a little more comfortable, and we'll get this show on the road. Sounds good. Go on, then. Thank you. See you in a minute. Take care for the post. Well, what really strikes me, and it's kind of profound is that Mark is such a player online. He spends so much time on the internet gaming, but when it comes to the real world, he's not even in the game. But he'll, he'll be all right, because I'll be there. This is the start of your journey now. I, I'm going to work on an area with you that I believe you need a lot of work on. Right. Be honest with me. When yeah. was the last time you flirted and seduced a lady? Seven, eight years, if not more. Seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So was it fair to say you're quite out of practice? Uh, yeah, I should have thought so. So we need to get you back on that horse immediately. The catch is you won't be needing your clothes. Right. After a dating drought of almost a decade, things are about to look up for the computer nerd as I'm plunging him into every man's dream. A spa full of luscious ladies. Any fear of the opposite sex will have to be pushed aside. What if I told you that behind those doors we have a load of women and wait for it, you're going to be pampering all of them? OK. Wow. I mean, if you had to pick a place to get me out of my comfort zone, this was pretty much the biggest target you could have hit. It's funny, when I said scantily clad girls, kind of laugh a bit, but then when I told him that he had to be scantily clad, the fear. I mean, if there's any one thing that's just going to immediately put me on edge, it's pretty much this. I've let myself go badly. I used to have a six-pack, and now I've got a keg. Before Mark gets to grips with massaging the ladies, there's the small matter of an introduction. Wow, hello, everybody. Are you a bit nervous? <laughs> Yeah, uh, just a bit. How would you be if you were me and you were surrounded by a bunch of really big, like, guys? You'd be intimidated? Or would you be just right. enjoying it loads? I'd love it. You'd be getting it right. 
Mark's struggling to cope with the bevy of beauties, but I'm hoping he'll fare better with some private, one-on-one -on -one massage time. You're gonna need this. Okay. First up, it's a simple hand massage which should allow Mark to focus more on the talking. I'm dying. This is excruciating to watch. He's so tongue-tied, he can't even speak. He's just a little bit awkward at the moment. Literally don't know what to say. He needs to think of something quick, as girl number two has just stepped in, ready for a back rub. Hang on. Do take, get yourself comfortable. You can undo my top if you want. That's if he can remember how. There we go. All right. What'd you do? I'm a merchandiser. A merchandiser? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. What was that like all, you know, Monday to Friday, nine to five? Yeah. yeah. So when you're done at the end of the day, what are you doing then? Um, I go home and probably just go straight to sleep. Poor Mark seems lost for words again. The poor boy needs a few pointers in the right direction. I'm gonna kiss my hand. Mm -hmm. Kiss my hand. <laughs> I know, I'm trying, but I'm trying badly. <laughs> How do you think it's going? Abysmally. <laughs> Breathe, mm -hmm. relax, and let them do some of the work and say, well, tell me some stuff about you. You know, deflect it a bit. <laughs> Thank you. So, with my simple pearls of wisdom, it's on to girl number three for a massage, below the waist. I was about to tell me about you. Me? OK, um, well, what do you want to know? Um, well, what makes you happy? What makes me happy? Yeah. I like writing, composing music, go to the theatre. Sounds cool. That's what I love. What about you? Me? Oh, well. What makes you happy? What makes me happy? Um, talk to mates. I think that's what it is, is. Mark seeming far more relaxed and, dare I say it, getting the hang of it. Yeah, and he's nice to talk to now and he's asking me loads of questions and it feels like he's loosened up a lot. That was so much better. It was much better, yeah. It was so much better. Like, everything I said, you like, you listened to and you were relaxed and the conversation was flowing and it wasn't boring and you were funny. Mark's a quick learner, but let's hope he doesn't lose it as I'm upping the ante for his final challenge, a full body mud scrub. And Mark's in charge. Oh, that's really nice. You've done this before. I was worried Mark would play the ladies like he taps his keyboard. But he's found his groove and actually seems to be enjoying it. Can I put some on you? Well, you're welcome to. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. Lovely. Oh, I'm How's so... That feel? It feels great. The conversation's natural, it's flowing. The way he's touching me, actually, is really quite nice. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Do you know what? I think he's having a good time. And, uh, yeah, I think there's a little bit of chemistry there. Back at the flat and with his kit back on, Mark reflects on the first bit of female interaction he's had in eight years. When I was first told I was going to be minus my clothes, all the worst-case scenarios went through my head. It was only towards the end that I sort of realised there was some fun to be had here. But to get to that point took so much of sort of uh, trying to relax, which just was so hard to do. Mark Britton has been hiding away from the world and enjoying a very special relationship with his computer. It is true that I have spent 23 hours straight on a gaming session. I've brought Mark to London to embark on a five-step programme that will help him climb out of the rut that he's in. My aim? To give him the confidence to succeed in work and love. That was just so funny and so much fun. I want to find out what Mark's hiding away from and why he seems so lost. So I'm sending him to counselling psychologist Angela Mutanda who begins the session by introducing Mark to someone he should know all too well. 
Oh, God. I'd like you to meet Mark. That is horrific. What I'd like you to do is to just take these stickers and these red ones, what I'd like you to do is just to stick on there things that you don't like about what you see. Have you got one to cover the whole thing? Uh, Break it down for me. All right, got a gut. You don't even want to stand next no, to... No, I don't. I'd, I'd quite like set. you to put the stickers on because I, I'm, I'm quite shocked by what you're saying, so... Second chin coming through. Uh, those aren't pecs. You seem really angry. Yeah. Should I put him away? Yeah. The reason I wanted to do that exercise with you, Mark, is because I think it's really important to look at yourself and notice the relationship you have with your own body. So I'm interested in the relationship that you actually have with you because it feels like you've been through quite a lot. Tell me about it. I did get in a very nasty assault, unfortunately. Uh, I went to pick up my brother from, <laughs> like, a, an under-18s, no-alcohol club night. Mm -hmm. And, unfortunately, he got into a rather nasty situation with a bunch of other kids. I put myself in between them. The next thing I know, I'm, I've got four or five people trying to, you know, take me out. And the first punch, my nose just exploded. Oh, my goodness. This person comes past an elbow straight into my nose again. Um, the recovery of it, I was in a, a full you know, Phantom of the Opera face mask, putting this... I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd f had fractures going out of both eye sockets. So, after this event, you, did you move away from home? For me, it was more a case of I just wanted out of the situation to move on to something new. And unfortunately, in the backdrop of this, my dad starts getting quite poorly. So you went back home and yeah. your dad was very ill? He got diagnosed as having multiple cirrhosis. Unfortunately, that wasn't actually what, what killed him. What killed him? Uh, pancreatic cancer. Five weeks later, he was dead. Gosh, how shocking. I mean, he, he made it as far as hospice. He never came home. So what happened after that? I made a friend with a, a young girl yeah. who was totally different to anybody else I met because she had cystic fibrosis. OK. So she was on a very short time scale. So, and she told me, you know, I, my biggest fear is being on a, a ventilator. She'd said to me fairly early on, mm -hmm. you know, when it reaches that point, will you be there? I said, of course I will. The last time she went into hospital, we, neither of us knew it was going to be the last time. Um, but uh, it quickly became apparent it was, and I got down there, um, and she was not in a good way. Uh, she wasn't coming out. When they asked me whether, you know, what, what, what to do... They asked you? Well, yeah, I was this next to kin, and I, it was me who took the decision to turn off her life support. You've been very brave for a long time. thing is, I remember all this happening with my dad as well. Yes. And it, this happened within a year of each other. Oh, wow, I didn't know So, that. I was broken up about dad, and it gets all jumbled up. Yeah. You know, yeah. I see both of them on the yeah. bed. Yeah. So, I can't work out who to grieve for first. Mark's been beaten up both emotionally and physically. It's no wonder he hides from the harsh realities of the world by losing himself in a safe and secure world online. I think Mark really does need to release a lot of energy that he's holding on to, and it needs to come through physically, because I can see he's very pent up and there's a lot of things that's upsetting him that he's sitting on, and I think just having permission to do that in a physical way will release some of that frustration, so that's an important next step for him to take. I think a lot of men lock up their emotions because they don't want to be seen as weak and like a woman. The last time I cried was when Michael Jackson died. I get angry and don't really know what I'm angry about. Men um, want to be macho. Women, I think, deal with emotions better, but for men, 
No, you, you do need to have an outlet. If you're frustrated, I guess the first thing for a guy is probably to masturbate. Maybe a Jason Statham movie if you're feeling angry and just want to vent some frustration. And then the next thing is to obviously do some sport, really. The hero within is beginning to raise his head. It's now time for Mark to release all that buried emotion and fight back. So I'm taking him to the best place to do just that. OK. Yeah. yeah. You up for it? Yeah, definitely. Have a look around you. Look at their faces. Just have a look at them. They're street tough kids. I'll make you as tough as them, all right? But before Mark gets a chance to confront his fears against a fully-fledged boxer, he must first prove himself outside of the ring. Hit the bag with comfort and then follow up and start hitting it harder and harder. All right, so all right. Go on. All right, look, 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 look. Sorry. I'll show you what to do, look. look yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. What you got to do, look? Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Don't go, like, you throw your body into it. Yeah, yeah. You're punching it's jabbing. Go, like, like that. There's Jabs, your jab. Okay. Let's get a nice cool jab. Bang, bang. <laughs> Take him out. Hurt him. That's it. Whack it. Whack it. Proper. Stand back. Stand back and hit him. Proper. That's it. Let the jab go more. Let the jab go more. Let the jab go. Now follow up and whack him over. Just like you've got a man in front of you. Let him go. Last ten. Keep going. Keep going. Stay with him. Stay with him. You know what? What he hasn't got in stamina, he's making up for in spirit. He's got the will to want to do it, but his body is like, failing on him. You know what? This is because he's been sat on his backside for 10 years playing computer games. This is probably the first bit of exercise he's done in 10 years. Mark's got through round one. It's now time to get into the ring, face a real fighter and survive for three minutes without hitting the deck. It's also Mark's chance to face his demons. Let him have it. Back him up, back him up. Come on. Pick, pick your punches. Just nice and slowly get your jab going. You really to toughen up. Want to see what's your about? Back him up, nice and steady. Jab go, knee jab go, that's it, and again. Mark, right, come here, kid. Right, you've got it. You've got every move there is. You're doing great, first time up. All right, kid? Just stay with it, all right? Brilliant, you've done well. He may be exhausted, but Mark's still standing. Has this inspired you to, to want to get in shape now? Yeah. <laughs> Bit of awakening, to be honest. It was great to, to release and step up against someone in the competition, just a shame body wasn't stepping up with it. Mark's fitness may not be quite up to scratch, but his spirit surely is. Today, he's proved he can look his fears in the eye, kick back and survive. Mark's proving to be a true champion. Today has been an amazing release. I've talked about things that I just haven't spoken about to anyone and in a long line. I've never summed all the stuff up in one go. And it's also kicked my ass because I am so, so out of shape and I've got to do something about that because I've only got this body once. And if I'm not careful, I'm not gonna have it that long. <laughs> Computer nerd Mark Britton spends all his spare time online, where he's a virtual commander among men. But I've taken him out of his comfort zone and brought him to London. Ow. There's nothing like this in Yeovil. He's been stripped bare. I used to have a six pack and now I've got a keg. Forced to get up close and personal with the ladies and deal with all his pent up frustrations. Back him up, back him up. But if Mark's to get on in life, he needs to replicate his online success in the here and now. So I've arranged to meet him at a secret rendezvous for the next part of my master plan. So we are here at one of London's leading advertising agencies. This is one of the most creative places you can be in London. You've got great ideas, you think on your feet you're a smart guy, and I know that in Cyberland, mm -hmm. you're good at working with teams of people, of cyber people. So I thought, why not get you managing a team of real people and actually put you to the test and see how you are in the real world? OK. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. Mark's ambition is to work in a creative environment. But can he get those juices flowing when it really counts?
My dream job um, is to be a celebrity. My dream job when I was little was to be a professional footballer. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a vet. And at the moment, I'm a hairdresser. I think ambition is important. Um, I think it's very important to be um, driven. Everyone gets a chance in life, and you just have to stay focused, decide what your goal is in life, and just go for it, no matter what. This is Mark's most difficult challenge yet to become a leader in the real world of advertising. René. Mark. Hello. Mark, this is René. He's creative director here awesome. at this ad agency, and he's going to be leading you through today's experience. Good luck. Thank you. Mark will need more than just luck today. He must create a TV advert for a fictional energy snack bar and present it to a panel of industry bigwigs at the end of the day. So, Mark, in advertising, you've got to be motivated, quick thinking. So, in 30 seconds, I want you to pitch that bar to me. Sell it to me, Mark. Uh, great tasting, uh, high in uh, healthy, uh, carbohydrate and gluten-free, refuels muscles in seconds. All right, stop, stop. Mark, that was crap. Yep. The challenge today is I'm going to give you a young team to work with. By 5 o'clock, I want you to come back with a script for a 20-second TV spot that sells me this bar. I want some real passion in this ad from you. And if your pitch is good, then we'll take you on for a week. We'll give you a week's placement. Awesome. The clock's ticking. Get on with it. OK? Thanks. With only five hours to come up with a catchy advert for this new product, Mark must take control of his new team from the outset. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark. I haven't had a chance to get to know any of you, so I need, you, need to do that really quickly. Hi, I'm Alice. I really hope he can do this. Hi, He's going to need real mental stamina, and I know how much he wants this. I mean, going from Yeovil, sat in his bedroom, playing computer games, to potentially working at a massive agency, I really hope he can do this one. Any ideas, people? I think you've got to start to think about what the type of mindset would be of our target audience. You've got to paint a picture of who's going to be buying the product. Do you know how the protein is... is Mark's forgotten that he's the one who's supposed to be the leader here. He needs to take control or this challenge will be over before it's even begun. Sounds to me like we need to get to know who our audience is and what they're actually thinking. Conducting market research is a good place to start, but let's hope our computer expert knows where to look. So, here we are, and we need to find our target audience. Mark's failing to lead the situation, and instead of working together as a team, his troops are wandering around like lost lemmings. Hello, sir. Have you got a moment? Excuse me, sir, have you got a moment? Mark's chance Hello, of a placement at the agency is slowly slipping from his grasp. He needs to come up with a new plan fast. I don't think we've got the right people here. No, we're in the wrong place. I think we need to hit a gym. Yeah, I agree. At last, Mark has stumbled upon his target audience. We're basically pitching this new product. I'd like to know how much nutrition. It needs to be very light. I think it's a worthwhile idea of getting people onto protein bars. That would be something that you'd be interested in. Yeah. Try. Okay. Team Britain are finally beginning to find their feet, but the clock is ticking. Back at base, the presentation is starting to come together as work begins on some all important visuals. Mark. Keep at it, guys. I'll be right back, hopefully. <laughs> you are running out of time. You're nearly at the deadline stage. You need to pull it together, cos you're going to be presented pretty darn soon. With the five o'clock deadline looming, Mark has to streamline all his thoughts and ideas into one single presentation that could lead to that coveted internship. I've got one minute to deliver this. I've got to make it punchy, say what I need to say, and shut up. Good luck. Thank you. Time for Mark to deliver his pitch. On the panel today are mentor Rennie Mitchell, creative director Tim Uden, and Mark Robertson, head of brand strategy. There's a lot resting on today. If Mark fails, it's back to selling computers in Yeovil. Hi there, I'm Mark. I'm here to pitch for a TV spot on this product. 
its key th key thing is it's healthy. It's a healthy alternative to protein shakes, things like that. So who is our audience for this product? Our audience is... Not coming through. Well, Mo, can you come with me? This fine gentleman, Josh, is our target audience. Also... Sorry, sorry, what was the product? What exactly does it do? Right, this is a biscuit alternative, an actual light, healthy alter protein alter alternative for protein shakes. OK, Mark, I think you've done a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. Have you got more visuals for us? Have you got anything else for us to see? Uh, we just haven't had time, and I do apologise for that. OK, thank you. Soon you can enough? leave now, please. Thank you very much. Presentation over. The panel discussed Mark's performance. So there was no clarity to that at all. He was all over the place. He needs to tell the story. It's... With Mark's internship hanging in the balance, it's time to hear the panel's verdict. Hello again. <laughs> so, Mark, that wasn't very impressive, really. I think, basically, it lacked the story. He didn't talk about the bar up front. You rambled quite a lot and confused us, mostly. Mark's unfocused pitch has cost him dearly, and his chance of an internship seems to be over. However, if you go outside, pull yourself together, cut the crap, come back in here and present it to us, and you've got a second chance. OK. OK? Mark's been given a lifeline, but he needs to keep calm. I got no freaking clue. Absolutely none. I wouldn't be so wound up if I didn't care. But I do. Now I've got to try and pull out of my ass what the actual advert is. Whatever Mark does pull out of his ass, it will have to be impressive and to the point if he's to stand any chance of winning the internship. Mark, you got a second chance. Take your time, but relax. I want to start with the product. Then I want it to go. We could tell you this is healthy. We could tell you this has got no added sugar. But telling you is not enough. So we're going to give you a 14-day trial to let you prove it to yourself. OK, thank you. Despite his nerves, Mark's delivered a concise and confident presentation. But in the cutthroat world of advertising, has he done enough to sway the panel? Mm. We get him in again? I guess we do. Mark, second time was better. You were more yourself, you were more to the point, and it was much better. So on the basis of the potential we can see in you, we'd like to offer you a placement. And the reason being, we know you understand it. We like your enthusiasm. So well done. So I think you can go and have a wee drink to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm absolutely chuffed for Mark. That shy guy from Yeovil nailed it. He was pitching for the opportunity of a lifetime, and he did it. Well done, Mark. <laughs> I really didn't expect that result. I thought I'd missed the opportunity. And to be told I hadn't was just a total shock. Cheers. Cheers. Well done. Britain is on the last leg of his journey to man up. Along the way, we've addressed how he interacts with women, dealt with the past... I remember all this happening with my dad as well. ..and gave him an outlet to vent his frustrations. <sighs> now for the remaining piece of the jigsaw, his clothes and that 1980s hairstyle. So I've sent him to meet stylist Gemma Shepherd to sort him out. Hi, Gemma. Hi, Gemma. Nice to meet you. Hi, and you. Right, I'm going to put you in front of the mirror. Oh, hi. <laughs> Come on. Come on over. Right. So tell me about a date. What would you wear going on a, a date? I haven't been on a date in a long time. OK. The, the one thing that's striking me, uh, and if you look at yourself in the mirror, mm -hmm. is this posture. So as you walk in, you've got your hands kind of in your pockets and there's a lot of roundness going mm -hmm. on and it's quite slumped in the core area, <laughs> yeah. OK? We need to find the man rather than this kind of look of... It's quite boy-like. Mm. I think it's quite skater boy, kind of hoodie, kind of quite sloppy. 
And there comes a stage where I think there has to be a definition. The hunt to define the new Mark Britain begins, starting with an array of sharp outfits. The waist fits, but the trouser doesn't, like... <laughs> I think, you know, there's a lot of nerves going on, and I think he's one of those people who probably tries to hide his nerves, and when, in hiding his nerves, what he's doing is actually clamming up. So he's quite uncomfortable, he's very stooped. He sort of stands in there, he, he behaves like a young boy. Gemma? <laughs> yeah? They're too tight in the leg. All right, no problem. I like the colour, though. Ah, much better. I like this first look, and uh, I'm interested as what's next, actually. It's cool. Okay. Okay, good to see you in some colour. All right, okay. Liking the shirt. That's nice. This is a better shirt shape. And actually, look how nice the blazer's looking. You know, and this is part of a suit, but look how great it looks with your jeans. I'm starting to feel like the clothes are starting to look really good. And I actually think that you're starting to enjoy this. Everything's starting to come together. It's all about, you know, we've got the structure going on. He's starting to pull up. It's definitely improving. Clothes done. Gemma gets to work on making Mark's eyewear more geek chic than bookworm bore. Before it's off to one of London's top hair salons to sort that 1980s hairstyle out. Mark, I've heard you've had your hair like this since you were 14. Yeah, so I take it you're up for a little bit of a change? Yeah. Time to banish those retro spikes and craft a cooler new quad. I know you can't see much, but it's looking better already. I think yeah. you're going to like that. Brought you up to date. After a whole week of confidence building, soul searching, and a complete man up makeover, it's time for the new Mark Britton to reveal himself. Mark's style has gone from grungy teenager to sophisticated man about town. you how do you feel the clothes I absolutely adore uh, they're great um, this is gonna take a little bit more getting used to because you've had that hairstyle since the 80s yeah leave it in the 80s <laughs> everything's been quite challenging for you hasn't it yeah have you learned a lot about yourself yeah definitely what, what have you learned just want to get myself out there and doing something creative I mean the internship is awesome are you ready to date are you ready for a girlfriend yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm totally up, up for that. You look the part, you're saying the right things, you've done a lot of work on yourself, a lot of hard work, and hopefully feeling the benefits. It's not over yet, though. Okay. You've got a date tonight. OK. And tonight you need to be the host with the most, because you are going to be cooking dinner for this mystery lady at the flat. <laughs> Have you got any special dishes that Stir you fries. Like? Stir fries? Yeah. Okay, so you think you want to make a stir fry? I have no idea at this point. I haven't done it for a long time. We should cheers to tonight. And to you. Cheers. cheers. We've put him through so much this week. He's really struggled, but he's come through it. And actually, underneath all of that shy, waffly exterior, is a, is a real diamond. You know, he's a diamond in the rough, and he just needs a good woman to polish him up. And so to Mark's final challenge, the chance for him to implement all he's learnt and impress his date with a combination of charm and stir-fry. <laughs> That's not the doorbell yet, Mark. It's your chicken burning. Mark doesn't know it yet, but his date for tonight is Mary, one of the women from earlier in the week. I met Mark at the spa. I was one of the many ladies with white bikinis, so I hope he remembers me. Quick thinking Mark hides the taste of over blackened chicken by adding loads of soy sauce before he finally gets to meet his hot date. OK, a little bit nervous, but looking forward to it. Here we go. Oh, well, hi, Mary. How are you? <laughs> How can you remember? I, oh, how could I not? <laughs> it's a positive start as Mark seems to be embracing the situation. Thank you. Do you say when? Oh, I love that noise. <laughs> it is great, isn't it? Glug, glug noise. 
But as Mark hurries onto the food, he forgets his manners. So, do you mind if I take my coat off? Oh, sorry, I should have asked. Oh, Let me help you. Oh, see, you are a gentleman after all. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> I do try. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thankfully for Mark, Mary's a big fan of the stir fry. This is going to be impossible to eat idly. Yeah, absolutely. I'm afraid there isn't a, a meal of dessert that uh, maybe I can be. Depends how much wine you give me. So can I top your drink up? Mm -hmm. Mark's flirting for, well, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> I was so impressed when Mark opened the door. Um, it was like, wow, a big transformation. I think it's going pretty well. I mean, she's an amazing girl, great to talk to, and pretty as any... I mean, she's stunning. As the evening's progressed, he's just coming out of himself. He's really flirtatious and... Yeah, I think he's doing really, really well. Normally, you know, I would show you upstairs, but I'm a gentleman, so uh, I think I'd better... Let's have a seat. Yeah, let's have a think. seat. Yeah. <laughs> Mark may not have had dessert on the menu, uh, but he does have something else up his sleeve that might just predict what lies ahead. Can we find our fortune? Yeah. Let's see what the future holds. So, one, two, three, go! Mine says you can do it. Wow! <laughs> Mine says you have exceeded what was expected. <laughs> awesome. Mark's done it. Like it. For someone who hasn't dated in eight years, he's become a cool and confident Casanova, ready for a slice of romance and making all the right moves. I thoroughly enjoyed myself tonight. I mean, we barely touched the food, and I actually take that as a good sign. We just spent so much time talking and just enjoying each other's company. I think you might be forgetting your bag. Oh. Thank you. That's all right. Should have held on to that. It'll give me a reason to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. It's been five weeks since Mark embarked on his journey to man up, and he's made good on his escape from Yeovil, as he's already well into his internship at the ad agency. I mean, when I started this, I wasn't living, I was just surviving. I was just going through the motions, just being there for other people and living my life through theirs, not actually having one of my own. Have you got a high-res version of that? As high-res as I, can, as I found as yet, but I'm trying to get some ideas down. Maybe let's just do that after lunch, eh? That sounds like a good idea. I'm seeing Mary. Who knows what will happen there? Right now, I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm looking forward to things. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I actually have goals. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 10 right now. I'm looking forward to life. <laughs>